insight. The first ever series to analyze the unexplored aspects and issues of Carnatic music. Dear Rasikas, welcome to the 13th episode of our Insight series. In the last episode, we discussed about Raga and how Rasikas go about identifying Ragas through various compositions. Today, we'll take up the same topic and extend it further to see what are the areas we could explore further. We will now look into some cluster of ragas as I said earlier in terms of how the phrase determines the understanding of the raga. For example, a very common raga we will take. I am going to first sing it and you are going to recognize it and then I will tell you what it is. So what is this ragam? Sahana, you guessed it, right? What I want to show here is that in such ragas where the phrase determines the identity of the ragam, you would see that you really don't need to traverse the entire gamut of the ragam actually. Here you see, ri, ri, ri. the ri itself speaks so much of sahana. So a keen ear would able to understand that this ri, the gamaka oscillation on ri which is happening in sahana is something very very unique to it. Though it, this ri, the variety of ri may be shared by many other ragas, how we are oscillating that ri is something very very peculiar and something very very unique to sahana. Or if you take another ragam, Ananda Bhairavi. The artist may then further expand on it, but then through these phrases, he has given the rasika, the clue that what he is going to elaborate now is Ananda Bhairavi or you definitely understood that it is Bhairavi because the certain key phrases Though the notes which Bhairavi has got may be shared by something else, this particular phrase is very very unique to it. The way we sing this phrase is very very unique to it and that's why you get it as Bhairavi. And uh, here I also remember about how I mentioned to you earlier also that though every human being has got only two eyes, one nose, one mouth, two ears and other things, each one has got their own character and that's why each one of us also are known by different names as different individuals. And that's where here also I want to share that though each one of them share in common the seven notes only, how each one is able to get their identity through the way the notes are oscillated, through the way the notes are put into clusters and phrases. Let us look into another example now. Here 
here riti gaula right where you saw that tadar nene sa so though you may not be able to understand whether it's nene sa or whatever it is that particular phrase tadar re 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 this phrase again you are able to identify through a composition many compositions actually start this way and that's why you are able to register the imagery of this phrase and the composition and relate to it for example janani nil novina janani or another composition paripalayam shri parip lege ma or another composition bale bale du bhushane bale one was of course by subraya shastri one was by swati tirnal and the third one was by tyagarajar though they all start off with that ninisa the root they take after that is going to be totally different and that's why each one is again a unique composer if everybody started the same way and took riti gaula in the same direction then we wouldn't have so many varieties of composition so the thought process after that is going to take its own route for example for if you take in uh, chennai from a particular railway station from central railway station many trains take off but after they take off they go off to different destinations so that's how here also you see that the main key starting point is ne ne sa and that's where you are able to understand that it is riti gaula another example let's take tan na na re tadar na so where that is saveri of course you're right where you see that so this has been also captured beautifully through various compositions like muruga muruga yendral uruga do uldal ullam or atyagaraja composition kinte ta bas maite nilte ni sairintu tarare so this phrase gets reiterated throughout the composition and uh, here before we move on i must mention that this beautiful association on understanding of ragas has been really enhanced by all the great vagekaras that we had mainly tyagaraja dikshadar and shama sastri who have very beautifully captured the essence of every raga in their composition not only captured the essence of the raga they have also captured it in the very first phrase so that there is no ambiguity about it now if i am going to do for example if the same saveri is sare ma pada sa sa ni na pa ba ge re sa if i keep on doing sare ma ma re ma pa pa ba pa da da ba da sa sa there is one very close raga waiting to peep in here which is malahari both share the same arohana sare ma pa da sa sada pa ba ge re sa that is malahari so you have to show where that particular phrase of saveri lies which makes it very distinct so an artist also would never start as sare ma re ma pa ma pa da pa da sa that would not be the root it will be da da pa ma ga re re sare pa ma ga re sa re da sa re ma another ragam let us take for example begada tad nal nal re 
So actually you saw that the phrase I was singing got captured in this very composition's first line itself and that's how you're able to identify it as Begada. Let's look at one more last raga, Purvi Kalyani. Here, where is the key phrase? So it can keep going on after that, but the key phrase This kind of this phrase has been also captured in many compositions like you can see shira sagara shai nirti ruvadi bajana me sasari da sari ga ga bayare ga or tyagaraja's composition or the popular composition of Neela Kantashivan. Ananda Nata Badu Brahmanda Nata Madu Vartile. Or let us take another example of a Dikshadar composition, Meenakshi Memudam. Meenakshi Ibe Mudam De Ibe. Where, what I wanted to say is that whether it is a Madhima Kala Kirtana or a Chauka Kala Kirtana, what will be the Talam, that phrase is very, very important and that has been incorporated by all the Vagekaras to show us that in the very opening phrase itself that it is Puri Kalyani. Here, there is a difficulty for Rasikas in terms of a cluster of another set of Ragas, especially the Melagartha Raga, some of which are very often confused by Rasikas when I sit in the concert hall I've been observing. For example, Ragams, Dharmavati, Simmendra Madhimam, Hemavati, Shanmugapriya. When the Rasika hears these Ragams, they see a lot of similarity between them and so sometimes it is quite some time before they are able to identify what the Ragam is and many times they are finding it difficult and once the composition starts only they are able to relate and say okay this is dharmavati or this is simendra madhimam now why does this happen because of the fact that in all these four ragas which i mentioned for example this is just one example dharmavati simendra madhimam hemavati and shanmuga priya you see that the purvangam that is the sa ri ga ma pa the swara and their varieties are common to all the four of them and the change occurs only in the Uttarangam, that is in the Daivata and the Nishada. So, when Saya, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, till there everything is same, when that portion is being sung frequently, you are just wondering which Ragam actually it is. Let us look at these four sets of Ragas to see how they are common yet they are different. Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa This portion which we call as the Purvanga, which means the range between Sa to Ma and then Pa here. 
Sari ga ma pa. From here, I can take off with the Dhaivata and Nishada for it to become either Dharmavati or Simendra Madhyamam or Hemavati or Shanmuga Priya. First, we will sing Dharmavati. Sari ga ma pa da ni sa. Sani da pa bagari sa. Next we come to Simendra Madhimam. Sari ga ma pa da ni sa. Sani da pa bagari sa. Actually the only difference between Dharmavati and Simeyandar Madhyamam lied in the fact that in the first one you had the Chatushruti Daivata whereas the Simeyandar Madhyamam took the Shuddha Daivata. So obviously it is very genuine on the part of the Rasika to get confused because as we keep traversing many of the notes are very similar. Let us take another example of Hemavati. Sari ga ma padani sa here also the Purvangam is the same, but here the change occurs in the Da and the Ni. Pada, the Da is similar to that of Dharmavati, but whereas the Dharmavati here took the Kakali Nishada, this uh, Hemavati took the Kaisiki Nishada, that is the lower variety of the Nishadam. Padani da pamagari sari gama Padani da pamagari gama pamagari sari gama Padani sani da pamagari sa The next ragam in this same cluster I would like to share is Shanmuga Priya Sari gama Padani sa Sani da pa ma gari sa pa ma gari sa ri ga ma pa da ni 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 da da ni ni da pa ma pa da ni ni da da pa ma pa da pa ma pa da pa da da pa ma gari ga ma pa ma gari ga ma pa da ni da ni da pa da pa ma pa ma gari ga ma pa ma gari sa whereas Rasikas would have listen to Shanmuga Priya many times, so probably they will be able to associate that ragam and uh, identify it much faster than a Hemavati or a Dharmavati. So again, the, as I said earlier also, the more we listen to a raga, the more we become familiar with it. Here again, if the artist for example just keeps moving around Pama Gari Sari Gama Pama Gari Gama Pagama Pagama Pama Gari Riri Rigari 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 Rizani Sari Gaga Rigama Mama Gari Gama Pama Gari So if I'm going to keep moving around the Sari Gama Pa there will always be a dilemma of what ragam it is going to take off into. So it is also important that the performer in his very opening phrase covers the entire gamut of the ragam to give a clear picture to the rasika as to what ragam he is going to really elaborate. Now this was just uh, my own sharing about the thought process of how a rasika actually looks at a ragam, how he conceives the ragam, how he is able to relate and identify the ragam. And here of course the first baby step that everybody takes is that the composition becomes the medium for understanding the ragam. Everyone for example even for a student of music you see that first the composition acts as a guide or a guideline to give us the contour of the ragam. Then after that a number of compositions in similar ragas give us a wider spectrum of the ragam. Then after that when we are sitting in a concert and listening to a manodharma also, we try to relate these phrases to the manodharma aspects and that's how our listening gets enriched. So thus we see that for a rasika, though he may not be technically aware of what a Shuddha Rishabham or Chatushas Rishabham is or what a Shuddha or Pratimadhyama is or whether he may not even know about what an Arohana and Avrona is or what a Swara is 
or what a gamaka is and what is the technical name for a gamaka that is used in the sahana rishabha or the technical name used for some other ragas rishabha yet we see that through years of listening he is able to enrich his repertoire of ragas in this context i would also like to just add a final note about how when a rasika is listening intently to music or carnatic music for 40 years or more there are many senior rasikas in this cadre actually where you see that the rasika in spite of not having learned music at all in the formal way is able to sing a composition very well actually as i would say at par with a person who has actually learned music in the sense that that composition has actually percolated into him after being heard so many times by him or for example even manodharma that is another very very bewildering area i would say where without knowing any of the swarastanas a rasika may be able to sing about 5 minutes of a beautiful todi which a normal performer is doing so there we see that intent listening and trying to assimilate whatever that is being listened to and to try to penetrate into it introspect uh, about it actually makes the rasika much more enriched in fact uh, this is what i have been trying to emphasize in our music appreciation program also where even if we actually are not able to learn music if we try to put our heart and soul into the listening process if we try to really genuinely try to improve our knowledge that is also very important a uh, concert is not just a past time it is not just for someone to come and spend 2 hours as a mode of entertainment as something where you just want to come and relax it is much more that that in terms of enriching you so it is also important for the rasika not to just be satisfied in being able to identify a ragam and be very gleeful about it he can then move on to another step and the next step and that is how he also feels a sense of gratification a sense of satisfaction when he listens to a concert with this we come to the conclusion of this particular episode i am sure that rasika has found it very very interesting because even in our appreciation courses though we teach a number of things about music in terms of other things like the compositional forms and other things after the course ends the basic question which every rasika has in mind and comes to us very earnestly and asks all is fine but how do i identify a ragam it does not happen overnight let me not give you any false hope on that it is a very continuous process a beautiful journey a process of discovery and when you take part in this journey in a full fledged manner i am sure you will be able to enjoy ragas and you will be able to really know how this ragas listening process can be a very enriching experience if you have any questions or feedback about this program please feel free to whatsapp or email to us i'll be most happy to answer it thank you